Good morning, day 315. It's rainy, so I decided to stay at home and enjoy. Okay, so we're going to talk about 2 Timothy chapter 2 today, and I'm titling it to stay focused. And that is exactly what Paul is telling um, Timothy. Stay focused. Don't get distracted. And he uses several analogies. Hey, good morning. He uses several analogies of a soldier. Um, like a soldier's not going to go over and start getting involved in civilian matters. He's going to stay focused on being a soldier and what his commanding officers are expecting of him. Athletes the same way. Athletes are going to stay in the game and stay focused on their game. They're not going to run up in the stands and start being a spectator. No, they're there for their purpose. Like, you are stay focused on your mission. And this is a really good one for me, a really good one, because as a recovering people pleaser <laughs> um, and somebody that was like uh, – trying to run my own business and and I thought I was being focused by doing everything that my clients wanted <laughs> like everything I let my clients run my business and rather than me setting the expectations me staying focused on what I needed to do one of which is serving my clients um, and so now as I'm kind of redesigning my life my identity myself and bringing all that scattered energy back to myself and doing my best staying focused for me is a new skill that I'm learning and you know our habits and how we show up in life sometimes we think it's just who we are but really it's a choice and you can choose to be different but you have to be willing to do be uncomfortable for a while while you're going through the change and staying focused is one of those things even when your ego the way you're used to being is going wait a minute this is weird I don't like I don't like this do it anyway stay focused stay focused and even realizing that there is a process and um Paul also advises him, like, don't get caught up. There will be people that come up and try to distract you and tell you, oh, what are you doing? Like, and try to distract you with arguments or their own logic. They'll try to pull you out and, and get you unfocused. He said, don't do that. And those of us that are really trying to live focused and in a different way, sometimes it's like swimming upstream. Like the world is just living, most people kind of live on autopilot the way I used to live and just reacting to life versus consciously choosing how to live and living a life by design and building a life that you love. That requires so much focus and conscious living and a lot of people aren't, they, they don't get it. Um, I think... Um, there are some quotes out there, and forgive me if I butcher them or get them wrong, but basically, don't let people that are out up in the arena, you know, and aren't really doing things, uh, come in. Don't take advice from those people, <laughs> in other words. Don't, if they're not in the arena and daring greatly, um, don't listen to their advice or their two cents or their opinions. They're caught up in living a different way. So don't take advice. If you if they don't have what you have and they're not doing the things that you want to emulate or do, like don't take advice from those people. <laughs> um, and that's been a really hard one for me to learn because I seem to have been downloaded. And many of us have been come from dysfunctional families. I love them. They were doing the best they could. I'm, I'm sure I'm doing a lot of dysfunctional things. I'm doing the best I can. And I'm sure my kids will have feedback for me one day um, because I did live unconsciously and just from that people-pleasing, codependent mode for uh, most of my kids' rearing. And I kind of woke up um, when they were, my youngest was what, um, had just hit double digits and the other one was kind of 
just entering their teenagerhood, when I started going, wait a minute, I'm not really getting the results I want out of life. Like, how did you ever like wake up and go, wait a minute, how did I get here? <laughs> it was because you weren't focused. You were just kind of living on autopilot. And, and maybe that's too general of a statement because as I even reflect, I was very focused on certain things um, because I had come from some trauma and had some things happen when I was a younger person. So I really did chart a new course and was almost hyper-focused on some things. And then everything else I was sort of in reaction mode to or just living on autopilot. So the people-pleasing is part of what got me in trouble <laughs> in life. Um, and not maintaining my own focus on my own identity, my own wants and desires. Um, anyway... I I just, I get so much out of reading the Bible, not just because as a believer, or and you can believe whatever you want if you're tuning in, but it's such a book of wisdom. It's such a book of just good teaching and how to live a, a life that you love, that is, that also, that supports you living from a whole place, a whole like mind, body, spirit, how to live a good and satisfying life and also to help others do the same thing. Um, when, and when we bring all of that scattered energy back to ourselves and we harness it in a really focused way, we check in like, what did God, what kind of gifts and talents did God give me? Why am I here? I don't need to go and do all of these things over here just because other people might like me to or what society says or it's what I think other people are expecting of me. And what I have learned when I started, you know, living from a, from this position and even having some healthy boundaries around my time, getting more focused, I actually got more respect from my clients. And if I lost a few clients because of this, they probably weren't the ones that I wanted to work with anyway. And being okay with disappointing certain people. Um, there are people that don't like other people that have healthy boundaries and they go and, and or right. And so they go and seek out people like I used to be that have no boundaries and are okay just um, jumping when they say jump. So that is what Timothy, Paul, I think part of what he's telling Timothy here is stay focused, have healthy boundaries, stay focused, do what you are here to do so that you won't get distracted trying to please other people or getting into arguments with people that are trying to get you off track. Like stay focused like a soldier, like an athlete, like a farmer. He makes that analogy too. Um, Farmers that are actually producing crops and that get to enjoy their uh, the fruits of their own labor, they got that way because they were being good farmers. They were focused on everything that it m means to be able to grow food, which takes focus. They're not just planting things and then going off over here and doing other things. They're tending to their crops. They're doing all of the things that they need to nurture those crops. And then they get to, re to reap what they've sown. Um, so it's kind of the law of the harvest. And that was a hard one for me to wrap my mind around because when you're and talking specifically to my fellow like people pleasers out there or recovering, it's really insidious because it, and this is, well, the ego in general, wherever you fall on the spectrum, is very insidious. And the, the things, when you're a people pleaser, you get so many compliments. It's like, but you're so nice. Like, you can be so easily deceived. Like, what am I doing wrong here? I'm just being a nice, good person. I'm kind. I'm doing things that people that make people happy, 
like, but then I was shifting all of, but ignoring yourself to that extent, to that sort of self-sacrifice is not what God wants. It is not God's call in our life to do that. We lay ourselves down actually by harnessing our power because it's our ego that is telling us to go out here and do this. Um, and that and living from where your power and your attention is scattered is uh, so unhealthy and it is so counterproductive to living a good life. It will leave you exhausted. It will leave you being maybe satisfied with the counterfeit of being, you know, the people that people pleasing can get. Um, but it's not satisfying. It's not nourishing in the way that living from love and loving yourself. Love your, When you love yourself, you are loving God. God is within us. We are within God. It is all one. And so to focus only on others and ignore yourself is not loving. But it can feel that way. It's very deceiving. Um, and it's really uh, pride dressed up. Pride and ego dressed up. Um, telling you. And, and the trying to be good. You know, reverse engineering the fruit. Trying to be good. This is the paradox. And opening your mind up to non-dualistic thinking. Is when you try to be good. You're, you're bad. You're, you're not being so good. <laughs> Um, rather than just living from a place of love, living for your purpose, harnessing and focusing on what you are here to do. It not only blesses you, it blesses God, it blesses everybody. You become who you are meant to be in the divine consciousness, in the divine plan, um, rather than you know, the, the analogy Paul makes is several times, and I think Jesus even made it too, is the body. And when you are designed to be a thumb, a thumb, and you're over there trying to be an eye, it's not going to work. Like, it, it's not who, what you were put on earth to do. And it causes not only frustration for you, but for all of us. And... But because we have free will, it's like we can just run around and do uh, what we want versus when you can sit still and quiet and, and cultivate your intuition and your inner knowing, calm down, focus, and bring all that energy back to you. And God will lead you. Divine Spirit will lead you. Um, and you know, most of us know, and we're ignoring it because it feels like too weird or who am I to be that way? And it's like, well, who are you not to be? Who are you not to be? We are the, the clay. He is the creator, the potter. Um, and who are you not to be? And I think that is also part of what Paul is, is saying to Timothy, stay focused. You are here for this purpose. Don't get distracted. There will be a lot of people that will try to get you distracted. Do not pay attention to their arguments. They um, pray for them instead. Be kind. Live in a way that will cultivate and help you stay focused. Don't, you know, try to stay away from things that um, bring out those fleshly in the moment impulses that are hard to resist. Like try to, to guard yourself, um, take care of yourself and you're going to do just fine and people will be blessed for it. So that was the message I got today. Of course, I could have read that whole chapter in probably a fraction of the time I just talked. Um, but I just really like unpacking the practicality of this, this uh, book. 
and getting a lesson that I needed reminding of, um, that I always need reminding of because the temptation that is like my fleshly temptation is to want to get those little atta girls and, Oh, you're so nice. And, um, that can really easily distract me and get me off my mission. So don't miss the great thing that you're here to do by doing all of the good things. The good often um, get in the way of the great. All right, go have a great day. And goodbye here from rainy Kentucky. All right, see you tomorrow.